What's up guys and welcome back to my Camper Conversion YouTube channel. So today's video as part of this Mercedes minibus conversion is going to be fitting a replacement, well a new passenger seat in this bus because as you can see there's only the one driver's seat at the moment and all of the uh, rear seats have all been removed as well. So to be able to carry your passenger I'm going to have to fit a new base which means ripping up all of the uh, bus flooring that's been laid in when the van was converted into a bus. Now underneath the bus flooring there should be the original Sprinter uh, front cab chassis so hopefully it should just be a case of bolting the equivalent of a driver's base into the passenger seat getting some seats that actually have seat belts built into them because obviously there's no seat belt harness on the left hand side or anything so you're going to have to get some sort of seats that have the seat belts built in now I've already been out and bought some, I've got some BMW 4 Series convertible seats Full leather, full electric and they do have the seat belts built in so I'm going to be also swapping the driver's seat over as well. So first things first, there's lots of aluminium trim. I've just started peeling a couple of little bits up just from around the driver's seat there. So plenty more to go all the way around. Then all of this grey flooring is going to be getting ripped up and it's going to be getting replaced with uh, the same sort of flooring that I've got going all the way through the back there as well. Just for continuity so it just flows from the back straight through to the front as well. Hopefully it should be relatively straightforward, I don't know, we'll have a look, as I say the floor hasn't been taken up yet so it's all going to have to get ripped up and have a look at exactly what's actually underneath, see what fixing positions there are. As I say, I've already got a driver's base there as well so I'm hoping, hoping, it's just going to be a case of finding the same mounting bolts, get them mount, uh, mounted in, get the seats bolted to it and then hopefully by the end of this video we'll have some nice electric BMW leather 4 series seats mounted, drivers and passengers. So I'll get some safety gear out, some tools out and we'll get some crack done and get this floor ripped up. <laughs> So that's the base modified enough so it actually sits pretty much where I want it. Uh, three of the actual original mounting positioning points line up perfectly. So the left hand side front bolt and the two rear bolts line up perfectly with the original mounting holes. But on the right hand side there are no mounting holes here at all. So I've been underneath the van, checked this, uh, it's pretty clear underneath. Doesn't look as though there's going to be any obstructions. So I'm just going to poke a small little drill bit through first, just to be sure, just as a little pilot hole. If that goes through with no problems, I'm going to widen out the hole. Then I'll be getting some nice, big, strong, high tensile uh, bolts. Bolting the base through with a little spreader bar underneath, just to basically uh, spread the load of the base itself. And then I'll be able to finally get the seats mounted. But at least that's a driver's base, modified to fit the passenger side. And I've made a couple of little cuts to accommodate the strengthening bar that was fitted when the bus was actually converted in the first place. Obviously I don't want to take that out because that's been fitted for a reason. So as I say I've just made a couple of little small little slits on the inside of the base just so it sits over it just like the driver's seat as they have done originally. So I'll crack on and we'll get the uh, 
final few bolts drilled through, then we'll get the seats mounted. Right, so there's a little pilot hole drilled through, so I'm just about to clamber underneath the bus, make sure that that hasn't hit anything. It shouldn't have. I'd already checked to be sure that, as much as I could, that it was going to be uh, a clear pathway. Just going to scramble underneath, double check, and if it is clear, I'll get a bigger drill bit out, widen it out, and we'll get it bolted in. Right, so now the bases are mounted, I'm going to be mounting the actual seats. As I say, these are BMW 4 Series F33 seats. They are available online if you like them, they're certainly not cheap, I'll say that. But uh, they are out there and they do have the seat belts built into them. There are other seats that have the seat belts built in as well, but I just like the look of these ones. So first things first, I'm going to do the passenger side, I'm going to get the swivel base mounted to the rails. Now looking at where <coughs> looking at where they can actually be mounted up, where all the original holes are, it's not going to be too bad really. I'm going to have to use a spreader plate bar on the left hand side because the BMW rails are wider than the sprinter bases and because I've got a uh, driver's base this is obviously drilled to the actual Mercedes base so this has got pretty much the same dimensions so this side's going to have to just have a little bar going across the right hand side I'll be able to get one original mounting hole in the rail there's another hole here that just needs widening out and then I'll be able to use that one as well then as I say I'll use some nice thick chunky uh, probably 3 or 4 mil metal and uh, just spread that across so I'll be able to use again the original holes and get those mounted into the original holes in the swivel as well. So I'll crack on and get this mounted in. Okay, so there we go, that is two BMW 4 Series convertible full leather Recaro style seats with the little pop outs, fully seated, fully mounted, passenger on a swivel and I've just finished doing the wiring as well. I've got the main power coming in under the driver's seat and I've, it's going to be a little bit awkward to see but I've just drilled a small little hole through the base then through the flooring and the cable comes out there tucks underneath the plastic covering for the bus conversion controls that's the main cable coming through and that's wired up onto a on off switch with a online fuse as well just for safety as well now the cabling has been a bit awkward to try and get the electric seats fully working on these seats it seems to be it's a known issue in regards to retrofitting modern BMW electric seats into a vehicle that doesn't have BMW CAN bus type uh, ECU management the problem being with the memory seats themselves, the seats should be talking back to the BMW ECU to store all of the seat uh, settings, this, that, the other. And when the seat detects that there isn't a CAN bus connection on the seats, it will only allow you to move the seats for around about 10-15 seconds and then it will cut power to them altogether. 
So to get round this, I've uh, fitted a little on-off switch there as well. So just by switching it on, you can then move the seats backwards and forwards as much as you want, including the backrest as well. And that goes for both seats. And then when you've got it in the position that you want it in, turn the power off. And then that will reset the power to the seats. And I think these seats have around about a 90 second lockout, something like that. So once you've moved them for your 10-15 seconds movement, you then can't move them again for another 90 seconds or so. So I say fitting a little switch like that, it just means that you can flip the power on and off to the seats as required. So then they can be moved, they can be adjusted, and it's not going to be an MOT fail. Because having seats that have adjustment that won't actually adjust is an MOT fail. If they were bolted, like racing seats were bolted to the floor, obviously there is no adjustment, so that will be a pass. But any sort of seat that should offer adjustment that isn't, whether the mechanism's jammed or there's no power, this, that, the other, that's an MOT fail in itself. So that's why I fitted this switch. So when it goes into MOT time, just flip it on. You can move the seats as much as you want. Turn the power back off and that will reset them. Now, as I say, the passenger itself has been fitted onto a FASP swivel base as well. This will swivel straight around with the only caveat being because the seats are quite close together, you just need to hold the passenger seat belt clip down while it rotates, otherwise it pushes it into the seat itself. So I'll just put the camera down, I'll flip the seat around, I'll show you this in action. So there we go, in one nice fluid movement, there's the passenger seat fully flipped around so it will face the rear of the bus and as a, because these are the Recaro style seats as well they have the additional pop out bit for an extra little bit of leg room and trust me I've just been away in this bus it doesn't look as though it's been in uh, a usable condition but I've got it usable for a quick little trip went, went away for a few days and just that little extension on the seat made all the difference for comfort just when sitting on the swiveled seat facing the back of the actual uh, bus itself so, I hope you found this video useful. That's it, this is how I've fitted these full leather 4 Series convertible BMW F33 seats into this Mercedes Mobility minibus. I'll put links in the description for this style of seats for other people that might be looking for specific seats with the seat belts built in. That's the main reason why I went for these seats. They look really nice, but more importantly, they've got integrated seat belts because there's obviously nowhere for the passenger belt to sit in this bus so that was the main reason why i got these seats but as i said they also look really nice at the same time obviously the passenger seat will just flip straight back around as well took it the wrong way There's the passenger seat back into its position as well. So, as I say, I'll put a link for these types of seats in the description. I'll put a link for the Mercedes Sprinter swivel base in case you're doing a normal Sprinter and you want to fit some uh, passenger seats or swivel bases in the Sprinter as well. So, have a look in the description for all the items that I've used within this install. Give the video a good old thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and have a look on my channel for all the previous content there's loads of videos on there i've converted five different vans on there or is it six i'm losing track loads of content on my channel so subscribe video thumbs up and hopefully i'll see you on the next video of the series of this conversion thanks for watching cheers